Good evening, everyone. I'm doing this uh, out of anger. Anger, I say. A beloved character of mine is once again, once again, uh, being messed around by the powers that be in such a way that I believe it is, again, another instance of the ruination of a great character. But this time, uh, they've gone a bridge too far, or they are preparing to, I should say. Uh, first off, I want to thank the Yellow Flash, another YouTuber, for bringing this article that I'm going to read shortly into uh, to my attention. Uh, I saw the first few minutes of his video on the subject. I didn't watch the entirety of his video specifically because I wanted to give my uh, impression of it, of the information, without uh, absorbing too much of his own opinions on the off chance that I'm swayed by them or end up repeating them accidentally. So if you see Yellow Flash's video on this, the link's in the description. Uh, just know that whatever I have to say about it is what I have to say. I'm not attempting to plagiarize him. So if we end up overlapping an opinion, there you go. And that's just the uh, the state of things. Uh, real quick, uh, thank you once again, Derek LaRue, so much for your uh, generosity and your support. I really, really do appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Uh, quick few hellos, and then I'll get right into it because I got a lot to say. Kiefer Dam, Shady Grin, Noah Asensio, of course, Derek LaRue, It's a Llama, Tall Person, Mike Savage, Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, the Punisher first appeared in Spider-Man number 129 in 1974. It wouldn't be 13 years until Punisher got his own ongoing series in 1987. Uh, the origin of the Punisher has changed very little in that time. Very little. And the origin of the Punisher is rendered, in summary, thusly. Frank Castle and his wife, Maria. We're taking their children, Frank Jr. and daughter Lisa, both of whom were somewhere in the range of six to ten years old, depending on the telling. Uh, they went to Central Park for a picnic, and during the course of that picnic, uh, the kids were flying a kite, and the kite got away from one of the kids. The kid chased after the, the kite, and in the uh, occurrence of finding the kite, the child or the children or the family in general, depending on the telling, uh, witnessed a mob assassination take place in Central Park. And as a result of this, the Castle family was gunned down by these mobsters in order to prevent there being any witnesses. Everyone died except for Frank Castle, who survived. And after that, Frank Castle, a Marine veteran of Vietnam in the, in the original rendering, uh, went on a one-man war on crime, both against those that killed his family and subsequently crime in general and criminals at large. That is the origin story of the Punisher, put simply. Um, and what is important for that character is that his family was taken away from him by random crime. Uh, and despite anything that Frank Castle may have done in his own past as his you know, further history would be developed over the years. Uh, he and his family in that moment, in that instance, all of them were innocent bystanders. Bystanders they had nothing to do with the situation. Wrong place, wrong time, victims of crime. That's been the constant since uh, more or less since 1974, or pr probably more appropriately 1987, because the character was still being fleshed out in those 13 years. Uh there's only ever been one mild revision to that origin story that I personally, as a fan of the Punisher, ever approved of. And that occurred near the end of the Punisher Max series in the early to mid-2000s. Uh, I'm going to show you that panel now that sort of underlines the one revision that I always thought was a perfect addition to his origin story at least for the sake of adding tragedy to it. So if you don't want anything spoiled for the Punisher Max series, because it is a major revelation of that storyline, best to look away for the next few minutes and otherwise, but I'm going, I'm going to ruin it for you now, as it were. So let me share that real quick. Uh, if I can find it here. Oh, which one was it? Is it this one? I think it's this one. Uh, sorry, let me just double check, make sure I'm not going to bring up the wrong. I got a couple of things primed here for uh, sharing, and I just want to make sure I've got the right thing uh, pulled up. Uh, there it is. Okay. So let me uh, take away the overlay here. That's causing me all the problems. 
Uh, I'm not quite sure how clear this is going to be. Let's see if I can zoom in on it a bit. So in the course of this story, we see more about Frank Castle's origins uh, prior to the event in the uh, park. And what it has mainly to do with is the Punisher has returned home from, from Vietnam and he is having major problems adjusting back to the real world. And it is detrimentally affecting his connection with his wife and feeling like a father and a family man. And so he decides to take his family out for a picnic in the park specifically for the purpose of telling his wife that he can't do it anymore. Can't do what anymore? Maria asks. This, any of this. I can't pretend I'm something I'm not. Pretend, Frank, we're your family, and you haven't even given us a chance. You haven't even tried. If you want a divorce, I'll sign whatever papers you give me. You can have everything, the kids, the house. But either way, Maria, I'm leaving. And this is the last moment before his family is gunned down. This is the last memory he has of his family, of him leaving them and breaking his wife's heart and breaking up his family as they are wiped off the face of the earth. That is the most perfect. If you have to do anything to the origin story, if you have to do anything at all, as far as I'm concerned, that is about the limit because it adds to the tragedy of it. You have a guy who cannot fit in with his family and he loses them at the moment that he's destroying. He, he, he's destroying them the moment, they're the moment before they're destroyed. That adds to the tragedy, that adds to the sense of guilt, responsibility, and need for revenge. That was it. As far as I was concerned, as a fan of The Punisher, if they had to do anything... This one small narrative revision, but otherwise didn't change the events, just added an extra layer of psychology to the character, an extra layer of motivation. That I thought was fine. I, I actually appreciated that quite a bit. That was the big secret. That was the one thing, in addition to the original origin story, I thought was good. Well, now apparently that's not good enough. That's not good enough because let me pull this up. Here's the article from comic book resources and the, and the indications of what may be coming. Marvel teases missing pieces of the Punisher's origin that will be revealed December 24th. Uh, sorry, this is comicbook.com. My apologies on comic book resources. If I said that. Marvel's latest solicitations have confirmed that more changes are on the way for Frank Castle with missing pieces of the Punisher's origin teased for an upcoming issue. Throughout writer Jason Aaron's latest run on the character, some things have been changed about the character's history. What is still unclear, though, is how much of it is true and how much of it are false memories implanted by the hand. Yes, by the way, if you didn't already know, the Punisher in the current iteration is now an enforcer for the Undead ninja cult, The Hand. He's also had his signature skull changed to some devil horn looking nonsense. He also no longer uses guns, as far as I understand it, just samurai blades or something. It's not the first time that they've tried to radically change the role of the Punisher. It might be the worst. Uh, I'll talk about that as we go. Uh, in any event, the, solic the solicitation for Punisher number 10 teases more reveals, reading in part, quote, Frank's wife, Maria, uncovers more dark secrets from the past, including more missing pieces of the Punisher's origin. Oh, yeah. By the way, they resurrected his dead wife, the hand did. The hand, the hand is sort of like the, the, has the Lazarus pit of the Marvel Universe. They have the ability to resurrect the dead. Yeah, so they resurrected Maria from the dead to essentially hold her hostage to influence Frank to do their bidding. I, I really hate it when the supernatural and the Punisher intersect in ways like that. I understand it is a large Marvel universe and that supernatural and superheroic things are unavoidable. I, yeah, that that's right up there with Frankencastle. Yes, at one time, the Punisher was a Frankenstein monster. It, it sounds about as smart and good as you can imagine. 
That's right. Frank's wife, Maria Castle, is alive and well, all thanks to the evil ninja cult, The Hand. When the Punisher was offered his position with The Hand, acting as the fist of the best and leading the group in dangerous fights, one of the conditions he demanded was that they use their resurrection technology to bring his wife back to life. The Punisher demanded this. See, I'm just finding this out now. The Punisher demanded they resurrect his dead wife. The Punisher would never do that. The Punisher is and always has been a, for, for everything else he is, he's still a Catholic. Uh, there are some things that you just don't mess with. And Frank Castle would not mess with resurrecting his dead wife or wanting his wife to be a zombie or risking anything like that. Nuh-uh. No. He asked they do the same for his children as well. But their science isn't perfect, and their young bodies have been dead for quite a while. Just as long as Maria's body's been dead, why can't they bring back the kids? Would that be too vulgar for Marvel Comics to resurrect dead children? As though that makes any sense for the Punisher to want them to do in the first place. In short, things are weird for the Punisher right now, and these missing pieces could very well change things forever for the Marvel favorite. Oh, well, they've already changed him forever. They've already changed him forever with any of this, taking away his skull, taking away his guns, making him someone that would want to bring his dead family back to life through evil ninja magic. Throughout the latest issues of the series, Maria Castle has been remembering her time with Frank before her death, although unable to recall that she died at all. The seeds are being planted for something about that fateful day where Frank's family died to be changed. What's unclear is what it might be. Will the series reveal that Maria had some kind of hand in killing their children on accident, or perhaps herself? The series has been going out of its way to make sure fans remember that Frank handed her a gun before and asked her if she knew how to use it. In any event, we'll find out soon. You can find the full cover solicit and solicitation for the upcoming issue below. Okay. So. What could they possibly do? What could they possibly do that would ruin the Punisher? Well, now, admittedly, the first thing that I would say if I lived in a world where the Netflix series did not exist, the first thing I would say is that if you really wanted to ruin the Punisher's origin, you'd make the death of his family somehow a direct result of his own actions. But that's already happened in the Netflix series. You know, take away the fact the Punisher, that Frank Castle himself was an innocent victim of that shooting, but somehow make it so that he was at fault, directly at fault for his family's death. Now, I can kind of understand in the past uh, attempts to make and try to refresh the Punisher. Because in a lot of ways, he's kind of a static character, right? All you really have is the Punisher interacts with or hunts down a bad guy and ends up shooting the bad guy or killing the bad guy, finding different ways for him to make encounters with different kinds of criminals, different criminal conspiracies, and how to take them down, uh, which is perfect. That's all you need to do. But somehow they lose sight of the fact that that is what the Punisher and the character works best at. Right? He is a tool to profile some dark underbelly of our world in reality, or at least a hyper version of reality, and then get the satisfaction of having some kind of takedown of that evil and underbelly. This was best done in that initial run of The Punisher from 1987 forward. Uh, because most of the time, the issues were episodic. They were one-offs. They were condensed, nice little stories of the Punisher running up against a particular situation, a particular scenario, a particular bad guy. And oftentimes, not a costume bad guy, but just some criminal. You know, some guy taking advantage of the system or something worse. Now, the best issue of The Punisher, as far as I'm concerned, is Punisher number 45, written by Chuck Dixon. Uh it has all the twists, turns, and darkness you could possibly imagine for the Punisher's world and tells a complete story in just about 20 pages. 
that's where the Punisher worked best. Short form noir fiction with revenge as a motivation, a lot of action, sometimes a twist at the end, but always the satisfaction of the Punisher eventually punishing someone. But that gets stale for some people, and they want to try to jazz up the Punisher or something and try to change him or make him something more interesting. Now, prior, the, the first time that I ever saw them try to do something ridiculous with the Punisher, that was thankfully reversible, was back when the Marvel's Edge series was out back in 1995. Uh it also is quite reminiscent of the Midnight's Edge logo. I'm wondering if that might, might not be the inspiration. I've always wanted to ask that. but uh, So in this sort of limited series of The Punisher back in 1995, they decided to go down a different path with the character. In this instance, they decided, okay, uh, after a long epic arc where The Punisher hunts down and kills Microchip, his partner, for many, many years. And Microchip arguably deserved it, depending on how you look at it. I won't go into that. I won't ruin that for anybody who wants to find out for themselves. Uh, the Punisher is arrested. He's put on trial and he's put to death. But his death is interceded by a mob boss. A mob boss who rescues the Punisher from death and takes him aside and says, hey, I'm old and I'm getting older and I'm not going to have much time left. And I run this relatively peaceful crime family. So I want you to take over as head of my family. You're Italian. I can sell that. And you know the, you know the city. It was this bizarre idea. What if the Punisher was the head of a crime family? What if he actually ran a segment of that infrastructure that he's been working to take down since his family was killed? When I read that as a kid, I thought, this is the stupidest thing I've ever read. <laughs> the Punisher would never do it. It was the first time I'd ever seen, in my perspective as a, uh, a young teenager back then, uh, the Marvel Comics attempt to take a character like that and drastically change and sort of rewrite everything about what the character believed in or would do and try to fit that square peg into a round hole. You know, I mean, I collected I collected the series because I was curious to see where it went. And it became readily apparent very quickly. You can't have the Punisher be the head of a crime family because every issue you have to have the Punisher doing something. And heads of crime families usually sit back and do nothing and let their underlings do it. But he was running around as, quote unquote, head of a mob family with the skull on his chest and shooting people. And after about, oh, I don't even know, it was like six or seven issues. It wasn't very long. Eventually, the whole thing had to be torn down because even the writers seemed to realize we can't go anywhere with this. This is not what the character is. This is not Frank Castle. He's no longer the Punisher if he's running a mob family. And it, it doesn't make any sense. And they got rid of that storyline fairly quickly and kind of returned to form for the most part after that. But now they want to resurrect his wife, have him resurrect his kids, and they're hinting at Maria having had some hand in either the death of the family or maybe instigating the death of the family in some way. Or maybe she was, maybe she pulled out a gun and fired at the mobsters in, the, in Central Park. You know, and, and Frank didn't. Frank wasn't the one to react first. In some way, shape, or form, I can only imagine now that they've neutered him by taking away his guns, resurrecting his now zombie family, despite the fact that he is a lapsed but otherwise still believing Catholic, that they are going to somehow, again, emasculate Frank Castle, even at the moment of simply losing his family. And it's... It is so infuriating to see. You know, is is there nothing sacred left? I know we've seen this. I, I, I'm so ticked off lately about what I've seen happen to Star Wars, and tangentially what I've seen happen on uh, in in empathy and in solidarity with Doctor Who fans, with Star Trek fans, with Witcher fans. What has been going on these last several years in just absolutely decimating? 
things that do not need to be changed. They don't need to be revised for a modern audience. Go make your own stuff. Leave our stuff alone. Why is that so difficult? And they're, they're seeing the fruits of those, those efforts now. Uh, but somehow they still live in this bubble where it's like, oh, we have to improve things. The old ways were bad and we know better now. We're so much more advanced. We're so much more enlightened than we were before. You know, this is not what society is anymore. We know better. We know better. So you strip a character of everything that made that character what that character was or what that franchise was and replace it with your your new, enlightened, better, more up-to-date, more sensitive version. It's it's sickening. It's frustrating me all the time. I I I have such I have problems already trying to find something creative, something to inspire me. Uh just just on the basis of storytelling, right? I, I want to tell stories. I want to write stories. I don't know what's good anymore because I'll watch a TV show that is ridiculously successful and I'll sit there and there'll be blatant problems, blatant logic holes, blatant manipulation of the audience for emotional value. And, and these shows get high ratings and they're all so popular and da, 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 da. And I'm sitting there going like, is, am I, am I just detached from reality? Am I missing something? Why should I care about this character? Why should I believe this scenario? This person should have died 17 ways from Sunday by now, and they want me to believe this person exists in a real world. Right? I'm told I'm supposed to like this character. Why? There's nothing likable about them. This character has some weird attachment to some dead person that they never establish why they have an attachment to this dead person, but it fuels everything that they're willing to do and sacrifice. I just got that watching uh, The Expanse for the first time, and that's not a new show. I mean, it's a good show. It's entertaining. But Thomas Jane's character, like, why? Well, speaking of The Punisher, Thomas Jane, I was like, Thomas Jane, I love Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane is a Punisher loyalist. But then I see what kind of writing they put in front of them or what kind of editing they did. And I'm left bewildered. Like, wh why am I supposed to believe this to be true? Why am I supposed to believe in this connection between this character or the other? How was this moment earned? And I'm not just talking about the expanse now. I'm talking about just in general. And so here we have again, the Punisher. Somebody comes along either being dictated to by higher powers and they have no choice or their vision for the Punisher and how to update him by taking away his skull, taking away his guns, taking away the death of his family and possibly even taking away his ability to defend his family in that critical moment. Right. And, and like Maria had to be the one to step up. She was the one with the gun. She's the one who pulled it out and tried to defend the family when Frank was cowering in the background or something. We don't know what they're going to do yet. I don't know what the uh, ultimate plot line is going to be on what secrets are revealed about the Punisher's origin, but I can only imagine it's going to be another instance where Frank Castle is made to be a weenie. They're going to just cut off his nuts even further, going all the way back to the origin story, which, as far as I'm concerned, everything else... You know, you want to put the Punisher through some weird stuff. You want to make him kind of a sociable kind of likable guy in LA for a series. <sighs> okay. You don't mess with the origin story. Like I said, you can, you can add to it. That one addition that in addition to being gunned down on that day, at that moment, Frank Castle was in a place where he was leaving his family and then they were taken away from him. All possibility, all opportunity, all potential, all future gone in a moment where his mind was at, I'm leaving, I'm detaching myself, I can't do this anymore. And then the decision was made, there's no going back. Guilt trip city for a practicing Catholic. So what do you guys think? Uh, I'll take a few comments now. And of course, if you're watching this in the future, please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. I love The Punisher. I've loved The Punisher my entire life, practically, since I started reading comic books. Uh, and thankfully, they cannot ruin what has come before. It's still just so sad 
to know that anybody coming in at this point in time, encountering these characters, these franchises, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, The Witcher, The Punisher, anything you can think of these days that they're deciding to water down and soften up and revise for modern audiences. It's sad that they won't be able to share in the same kind of uh, joy, right? I mean, Star Wars, just as an example, was a common language for people across generations for decades, right? You know, I, I you could talk Star Wars with someone like if, if you were there when the movie came out and you've been watching Star Wars and reading Star Wars books since 1977 or whatever, and you got into a conversation from somebody from who was born in 1995, who wasn't there at the beginning, but read the same stuff that you did. And you have a shared language, a shared understanding of a unified or semi-unified universe. You could talk about who's Zuckus, who's Forlom, what's their significance in the Battle of Endor, Right? If you if you read Tales of the Bounty Hunters or any of the comic books. Thank you, Snub Earth. Uh, we are the instant gratification and self-love generation. Mary Sue's mon uh, monetarily are viable. Uh, I was told the outrage makes up for that difference in sales that bombs make because places like Disney get money from other revenue. Oh, yeah. No, people still buy this stuff. Somehow they still justify making these things, even though they're either critically a failure or the very fan bases they're banking on loving this stuff or coming to see this stuff, reject it instantaneously. The most recent and most dramatic example being The Witcher, Blood Origin. Even the critics couldn't stand up to this thing and defend it. Now, thank you, Shady Grin. I, I think I hate Marvel Comics. I will always love the original characters, but the company can burn for all I care. Uh, yeah, the, the modern iteration of the company has just lost the plot absolutely lost the plot they don't care they just don't care and that's you, you you give these things to people who care people who love the material not people who hate it uh, again going back to the witcher look at the behind the scenes stories of what was going on with henry cavill fighting the writers of that show for the for the three seasons he was on there and they openly express their dismay and dislike of the source material. Why would you hire those people? Why, why wouldn't you give these things to people who love the material, who appreciate it, who understand it? Oh, we have to tear it down to build it back up again. Uh, thank you. We'll find somebody else. That's how that should go. Bridget, 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 Scribley. This is why I jump ship to shows like Demon Slayer and Spy X Family. Yeah. I mean, the people who do the mangas... They care about their stuff and they don't let anybody touch it and mess with it until it gets to Netflix, of course. <laughs> and then and then Netflix goes to town with it. So I don't know what kind of control they have over their IPs. But if you want an example, again, coming back to The Witcher, like when I heard, I okay, in college, I had friends who were Warhammer 40K freakazoids, right? And I looked through some of those books. I was never a sort of a miniatures gamer or anything. I did learn one thing about miniatures gaming. Never play against a carpenter because a carpenter can eyeball distances and measurements without having to use measuring tape and can know things and angles that you can't see if you're not that practiced. So never play tabletop miniature battles with a carpenter. That's the one thing I learned. But other than that, I read through the Warhammer 40K core book because the lore was so interesting, right? So... When I heard that Henry Cavill was going to be the guy executive producing a Warhammer 40K TV show, I got excited. And I'm not even a Warhammer 40K fan, like some kind of rabid, a loyal fan. But just the idea that somebody who I knew loved a property, right, loved that world, appreciated it, respected it, was excited to be a part of it, was going to be the one running that show. I'm excited to see that show. And I know practically Zippo about the universe, but knowing that someone who cares is going to be in charge of it, I'm excited to see what he does. Can you imagine if somebody came out and said, I've been a Punisher fan since I was 12 years old. I have a giant collection of Punisher comics. And I have opinions on this, this, and this change that they've made to the character over the years. And now my phone's going off because my phone's going off. Anyway, I'll never understand the mentality of executives at Netflix and Amazon and 
uh, Disney and all these places that hire people who hate their characters, who hate them. I'll never understand people who create such wonderful worlds who suddenly turn around and turn their backs on their own creations in order to come across as more enlightened. Like, oh yeah, everything I used to do, yeah, that's terrible. And everything, and anybody who loved that stuff, oh, they're terrible too. Anybody who, who I, I forget who it was, there was one of the creators of um, The Punisher who's like, yeah, that skull's got to go. Anybody, anybody who brandishes that skull or wears a hat like it or anything else, they're terrible people. And they need, they need, they need mental health, you know, attention. It's just, uh, Terry Deos, uh, I read battle, a battle angel Alita when Viz was coming out in issues, anime and manga have always built hero's journey. Even one punch man, it's more of a satirical take on comics. Yeah. Genuine characters with genuine motivations who aren't just there to be somebody's uh, agenda driver. Can you imagine that? I mean, is, is it so silly that that has to be a rarity these days that you have a character who's not there for representation. You have a character there who's not lecturing the audience. You have a character there of, especially of an established IP who actually represents the character as written, but no, we have to tear everything down. You know, Indiana Jones, his entire legacy of saying that belongs in a museum, that's wrong. That's wrong. Now we're going to correct all that and say Indiana Jones has been plundering other cultures for generations now, and we need to give those artifacts back to the people who, 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 uh, who own those things. Yeah, he, he's terrible. Terrible, old, out-of-date white man. Hey, just, just wait. Indiana Jones 5. It's going to be the ruination of Indiana Jones. Again, as if Crystal Skull wasn't bad enough, but this time he's been put into the hands of people who have, a, have an agenda, an ideology they have to fulfill. Now, thank you, Kiefer Dan. People need to be original again. People need to appreciate that which was never broken in the first place, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If there's a theme, if there's a method that has worked, that something that is that you know a company or a IP is known for, stick with that. Right? Star Trek. It's about discovery and exploration and and moral quandaries. It's not about the action scenes or how many ships you can blow up. Shouldn't be. Right? Star Wars is about swashbuckling adventure, not feeling bad about yourself. It's about having clear lines between good and evil and having cool bad guys and heroic heroes. Not having sad, dejected, cranky old men telling you that everything that was that came before is just bad, terrible, needs to be destroyed and forgotten. You know, it's it's it irritates me and it saddens me. Now, I've occasionally, believe it or not, in recent history, attempted to write a story of my own, write a character of my own. And I run up against this wall of doubt, you know, because sometimes it's not easy to tell when I'm watching other things or I'm reading other stories. Like, am I being, am I, am I being talked down to? I get so suspicious now of everything that comes my way when it comes to some genre piece that I might be interested in, whether it's sci-fi or fantasy or horror or whatever. I'm, I, I'm always like just on edge that I'm about to be disappointed, that I'm about to be lectured to, that I'm about to see something that I might have a real interest in be totally decimated by somebody who just wants to, you know, go neener, neener at me and pull a fast one, right? Do a big switcheroo, pull the rug out from under me and make me not want to go anywhere near that genre, that IP ever again on the off chance that I'm going to be disappointed again. And it sours me. It sours me even to those things that I love, right? I, I've, I've made this analogy before. It had to do with relationships. Once you know that somebody's been lying to you, that you care about, that was important in your life, it's as if you take a photo album of everything you remember about that person and you take a big can of grease and just pour it in between all the pages of that photo album. 
Because every time you look back through those memories again, everything about that person, everything about your experiences with that person are going to be tainted, are going to be uh, mired in doubt about the legitimacy of that relationship. When did they start lying to me? When did they start deceiving me? And even though Punisher comic books, they're static, right? I can go back to them. I can go back to Punisher number 45 and relive that adventure anytime I want. And I can appreciate who the Punisher is, not what they've turned him into. But all the same, my love for looking forward to what happens next for the character dies off immediately. And so I have to enshrine these things as this is where it was good and they can't take that away. I'm just sad that, you know, 10, 15 years from now, if I find, if I come across somebody who's younger than I am, who's a fan of the Punisher, will we be speaking the same language? Will I have anything in common with someone who calls themselves a Punisher fan? I know I'm being very selfish right now, but that's how I make connections with people, shared interests, shared passions, right? This is, this is how nerds socialize. This is how we do it. This is how I've always had to do it because I always had the biggest problem socializing with people in normal ways. It was always a matter of finding some shared interest, some shared passion, some shared enthusiasm over something that I made connections with people, people that I would never have met or connected with otherwise. And so when I see these things being altered and changed and rearranged and updated for modern audiences, it's almost like the Tower of Babel, you know, trying to build that big tower up to the heavens. And then all of a sudden, no one can understand each other anymore, you know, except that I'm being punished <laughs> for loving the Punisher. Uh, Richard Parker, the Punisher should go back to his original skull logo and they need to drop the superpowers and the swords and pick up the guns. They need to go back to one issue, episodic adventures for the Punisher. Little short stories of the Punisher and little noir situations, taking down a bad guy or encountering something, uh, just some moral test. I swear to God, if you go back to uh, the the first... I want to say 50 five zero issues of the first unlimited Punisher series, 1987 and forward. And the first say 15 or 20 issues of Punisher war journal. That is about as perfect an era of the Punishers you're going to find just as far as format and storytelling, you know, sure. There are weak issues here and there. Some stories are better than others. But man, back back then, they were covering some really heavy subject matter and putting the Punisher into some really heavy situations in those first 50 or so issues. And I'm talking heavy stuff. I'm talking controversial stuff. The Punisher defending a flag burner. Yeah, there's a, there's a famous comic book cover, The Punisher, uh, sort of fighting off some unseen enemy in front of a burning flag and defending the American flag. But The Punisher defends a flag burner. Yeah, you want to talk about some interesting storytelling going on there. Uh, the Punisher finds a uh, a military academy where some, let's just say, very, very bad things that they would never put into a mainstream comic as far as subject matter is taking place at that military academy. And the Punisher rightly takes down some very, very bad people. I won't go into too much. I don't want to risk getting any problems with YouTube here, but... Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. I'm starting to go on. I'll take another couple minutes for you guys, and then I will wrap up. Uh, Dylan Farnham, I think Kurt Metzger was talking about why they ruin all these characters was to push their own BS characters to kill off competition. Well, it's to, it, it's sort of like an invading, um, like ant colony kind of thing, right? You come in, you take over, and then it's yours. It's 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 the cordyceps right? The actual cordyceps that take over like ants and bugs and things take over their minds and start controlling their bodies so that they can then have the animal climb up to the highest point they can find. And then their head bursts open and all the spores go out. That's what it is. They find some functioning, popular, uh, attention getting entity to infect with their own agenda, their own, uh, ideology, whatever, 
And so that builds up their career and then it moves on to other things and on and on and on. They don't care about the body that they're possessing. They just care it is a vehicle they can use to move forward. That's it. Just perpetuate itself. You know, and so they inhabit this shell. They, they turn it into a shell of what it used to be. Just so they can turn it into an absolute robot with no life, no personality, no future other than to facilitate the ongoing nature of their own desires and agenda. They don't care about the character. They don't care about enriching the world or putting the character as is into a new situation and seeing what they do as that character. They want to change the character. They want to make it their own. It's not good enough. What you love, you don't get to love it anymore. I'm going to take that away from you. Uh, D5280, I'm going to only show my kids the original trilogy. All the rest is just well-funded fan fiction. Call to cope, but I want to have the original three magic with my kids. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Shared language. Shared mythology. I just... They're, they're taking that away. Bit by bit, day by day. But... Either way, everyone, I want to thank you for going along with me for these last 40 some odd minutes on this little rant, history lesson, and uh, complaint, I suppose. Uh, all I know is, is that the things that I love about the character, specifically the Punisher, again, in my mind, they'll never change. There is a correct Punisher origin story. There is a correct attitude of Frank Castle. And so for every new comic book or iteration they put out of the character, for every version of him they write for a Netflix series that is just completely off base. And if you want to know my thoughts on the Netflix series, I have uh, review videos of those uh, on my YouTube page, which I think you might find interesting. I go into much more depth on these subjects than I have done here. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I it's, it's really difficult for me. A, a, a lot of my... A lot of the lessons and character traits and things that I had uh, shaped for me about the world came from these properties in one way, shape, or form. I'm not, not completely, you know, but they were, they were important. Star Wars, Star Trek, The Punisher, Spider-Man. Uh, th these things, in a way, are kind of like sacred. They are part of my common language with other people, in a way. They're part of my growing up. They're part of my personal mythology. And it, it sours me every time I see someone who does not care about these things. Even things that I'm not some huge fan of, like Doctor Who, like The Witcher, uh, come in and decide that they know better. That they know better. They're going to fix it for us. I hope they learn their lesson. I hope the market finally teaches them a lesson as the Witcher blood origin is, as uh, so many other properties they're putting out there that don't make as much money as they thought they would start falling off by the wayside. But the only way that it's ever going to change is if people vote with their wallets. Otherwise, these fakers, these charlatans, these terrible writers, these know-nothing, uh, incompetent producers, they'll keep getting away with it. They will keep getting away with it. And somehow we're just going to have to rebuild it on our own. Somehow, some way. I want to contribute to that. I don't know how yet. I got to find, I got to figure that out. That's, that's going to be my New Year's resolution. How can I contribute to trying to add something new to this thing? I don't know. Either way, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Moderators, thank you for keeping an eye on things. Even though everyone here is so well-behaved, you have very little to do. Everybody who donated, thank you so much. I did it again. I forgot to point out the top of the chat box, the fundraisers to our friends Moonshock, uh, Angry Illinoisian, and his kitten. Please, I know uh, the time of year and everything else, budgets are tight, but if you have a couple of bucks to spare, please consider donating to them. They, their friends, and loved ones could certainly use the help. If you'd like to hear more from me, you can find me here Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern for another installment of TED Excellence, where I'll once again take a look at another off-brand TED Talk for enlightenment and fun. I call it fun lightning, enlightened fun, in 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 in. That's what I call it. Everybody. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. Happy New Year for anybody I don't get to see otherwise. And please be safe and well. If you are not well, please get well soon. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.